A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said of him, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Way back in 1999, I went on my first high school youth group trip. I'm only 33, I'm not very old. (laughs) It was was 1999 was when I uh, just finished my freshman year of high school, and our trip uh, was down from Virginia to North Carolina to a place called Camp Luther Rock. And all across the country, there are all sorts of Lutheran camps that are named Luther Rock or Luther Ridge or Luther this or Luther that. We were at Camp Luther Rock in North Carolina. And a band of 20-some of us with uh, leaders in addition to that uh, went to this camp to do a lot of different service projects to help uh, fix up parts of the trails and that kind of thing. But there was one project that we had to do at this camp that has stuck with me uh, ever since that week. At Camp Luther Rock, there is a ridge that overlooks the camp, and at the top of that ridge, there was an enormous cross. And we're talking big. We're talking tree trunk around, up maybe 12 feet in the air with a big cross beam that was six or eight feet across. I mean, a big cross. And from the camp, while you were playing volleyball or walking out of the dining hall or doing whatever it is that you were doing, if you looked up, you could see this cross from the top of this mountain Uh, from pretty much anywhere. Well, as it turned out, that 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 cross had been there for so long that it had become rotted. It had been there for years and years and years, and as the wind and as the rain and as all of the different critters had gotten into uh, that cross, it was time for it to be replaced. It had really taken a beating. 
And it was our job as the youth group of Resurrection Lutheran Church from Fredericksburg, Virginia, to change out the cross. This was no small feat because, as I mentioned before, the uh, upright beam was like 12 feet or more long, and the cross uh, beam was something like six or eight feet, and it was a huge, huge uh, diameter for this cross. What we had to do was take two new logs, for lack of a better word, from the bottom to the top of the mountain take down the cross that was already up there at the top of the mountain, then figure out what to do with that, and then hoist up the new cross so that Camp Luther Rock would have this uh, great new uh, symbol of faith uh, for years to come. So what did it take? Well, it took about 15 or so of uh, we high schoolers on one uh, long cross beam and the other 10 of us on the other, with uh, adults kind of leading the way and helping us at times. And uh, you may think that we just ran up the mountain. You may think that we just (laughs) grabbed that sucker and made our way as quickly as possible. Why would we think that? Exactly. We were not the most athletic of youth groups. Our our youth group here at St. Stephen a few years ago had like the whole basketball team on it. We were not the basketball team youth group. We, We were a scrawny bunch. And so... What it took was all of us, one, you know, lined up on one side holding the uh, log like this, and the same thing on the other side. And what we did was sort of sidestep up the mountain, 10 steps at a time, and then put it down. And rest and get a water break, and then wipe the sweat from our brow and kind of look at the trees, and then pick it up again, and 10 more steps back up the mountain, over and over and over again for like five hours. We did get a lunch break. (laughs) We did get water refills. Uh, Some of the spryest among us would run back down the mountain and fill up water bottles and run the water bottles uh, back up to us. But it was quite a thing. And the first thing I thought of when I heard the gospel story for today was that experience of bringing this cross up the mountain. Because let me tell you, it was neither easy or light. (laughs) It was not uh, an unburdensome thing to do. It took a lot of energy. It was exhausting. None of us moved that night. We all just sat there and ate our sort of sloppy joes and kind of dozed during the Bible study that sort of brought it all home and really made it meaningful for us. But we were, we were shot after that. We carried that cross up the mountain. We set it down. We didn't do the whole switch out in one day. The next day, we took the cross down. We all went back up the mountain. We took the old cross down. As it came falling down, it sort of shattered because it was so rotted. It's an experience that still is in my heart. I just got shivers again when I uh, told you about that because it was so meaningful. And then on that third day again, we got ourselves together and hoisted that thing up to height and started pulling up the crossbar and got everything in place. Some of the camp people helped us get everything fastened in just the right way. And at the end of that exhausting process, the end of this journey that just took everything from us, we finally understood a little bit of why Jesus would say that his burden uh, is, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Because it was amazing, in that instant when we saw that cross lifted up again, all the memory of the pain of the whole operation went away. And I can still attest to this, I still don't actually remember in my muscles how heavy it was. I remember that I remember it being hard, I remember that it did take a lot of work. But the thing I remember mostly is the sense of awe at seeing the cross lifted up again. The sense of awe in seeing this old cross fall down and break into a million pieces, and this new cross take its place just days later, like it had always been there, like it had never needed to be switched out. And even though that journey was burdensome, even though it was painful, even though it was exhausting, even though it took everything out of us, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the project, none of that mattered anymore because this cross was lifted up, this symbol was upright again, and we understood what all that work and all that effort was going toward. 
Jesus, I think, has a different view of what it is to be a part of this world than what we do. We might be tempted to experience this journey of the cross up a mountain as something that is utterly burdensome, utterly painful, utterly hard. But Jesus doesn't see the world like that. When Jesus talks about what it's like to bear the burden of the cross, when Jesus talks about what it, when it, he is talking about holding this yoke on his shoulders, he doesn't say that it's difficult. He doesn't say that it's hard. But he says that it's easy, even when all evidence is to the contrary. If you go into your mind for a moment and think about uh, some of the most meaningful moments of your life, some of the most difficult moments of your life, some of the hardest moments of your life, most burdensome, most heavy, I'm sure you can think immediately of a few things. Maybe you care for somebody that you love very much who's had a difficult uh, way with their health, takes a lot of care from you, a lot of attention, a lot of love. Or maybe you are experiencing some sort of grief, some sort of loss that continues to feel like a burden, continues to weigh you down. Maybe there is an illness of your own that you are carrying along with you or some healing that is very difficult to work through. And in each of those moments, there is no absence of pain or feeling down or maybe a little loneliness or sadness. It's natural, of course. You don't need to put on a happy face to be faithful in the midst of things that are difficult. When you are experiencing those things, you are feeling something that is burdensome. It really does weigh you down. It really does feel heavy. And Jesus isn't going to try to kid around and tell you that something is easy when it's not. Jesus isn't going to try to invite you into an alternate reality where the things that matter to you somehow don't all of a sudden. What Jesus is trying to teach us, though, is what those moments lead to and what the fabric of this world that God has created for us is really made out of. We're tempted on days like Good Friday when Jesus is hoisted up on the cross and hanging there to think that that's the end of everything, that the darkest, most painful moments are it, that those moments are the ones that are definitive for us and are going to be the making and the story of our life. We're tempted to think that the hardest thing is the thing that has claimed us. But through Christ and the cross, we see that that's not true at all. Christ is a human being just like the rest of us are, and Christ rose from the dead. Christ invites us into new life. Christ invites us into a new way, and Christ shows us that even in the darkest, most deadly moments of our lives, following moments later, there will be an opportunity for light. That doesn't mean the hurt doesn't hurt. That doesn't mean the burden is burdensome less. It doesn't mean that the things that matter don't. But it means that God is with us through it. And God brings us into new life in the next moments. Over and over and over again. Not necessarily once and for all, but as we go, God is with us. We take 10 steps with that heavy, heavy cross beam, and then we set it down, and we take a breath, and we get a drink of water, and then we carry forward. We care for our loved one. We experience what it is to be in pain with them, and then they breathe, and then we breathe, and we catch our breath, and we go again. We experience the loss of grief and pain, and then for a moment, maybe we have a happy memory and laugh, and then we experience it again, and then we remember joy again. And it's this constant back and forth. It's this difficulty with joy. It's this easiness with difficulty. It's this heaviness with lightness that is the, what our life is made out of. When Jesus says that the yoke is easy and the burden is light, he doesn't mean that the things that have made an impression on us haven't mattered. Certainly they have. But he's also telling us that there's more to come, that there's also new life that God is with us, that all that business about grace and love and healing and hope wasn't just kidding around, but something that was real and something that will be felt. When I think back to that first summer trip, we could have thought that the operation was over 
and that this great cross didn't really have any meaning anymore when it came down to the ground and shattered into a million pieces. The thing was rotting out after all. Maybe it was just time for the cross to not need to be there anymore. But a couple days after it came down, it went up again. And a couple days after we had felt in our bones tired and worn out, we were renewed. And what a symbol that is for the rest of our lives. Because when Jesus died on the cross and was spent, just a few days later, he rose again. And in every moment where we feel pain and heartache, there's another moment that God brings us into a few moments later that bears us up again. The yoke is easy. The burden is light. Believe it or not. But God is with us. Amen.